I think we can go again ahead and get started. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thanks for spending, if you're on the East Coast, thanks for spending your evening, an hour in the evening with us, getting to know the Impact Fellowship. We're really excited, really excited to share this, share more about this with you all. Um, this session is, is being recorded so that it will be, we'll upload the recording to ADOC's YouTube so that people who couldn't make it to today's, today's Zoom call can watch it afterwards. Um, so if y'all don't, so it's going to be just recording people who are speaking and the screen share. And so if you guys want to ask questions, please feel free to pop it in a chat. Uh, we will be taking questions towards the end of our presentation. So um, my name is Ash. I use any pronouns. I'm one of the impact project coordinators um, at ADOCT and one a part of the team that's putting out this impact fellowship. Um, I am a Chinese person with long hair and a sleeveless shirt and a blurry background. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to make a land acknowledgement um, that I'm joining today from the traditional ancestral and Cedar territory of the Munsi, Lenape, and Kanarsi people, also known as Brooklyn, New York. Even if we are working on issues that seem separate, you know, the struggle for Indigenous rights is deeply connected to all social justice and human rights work. And so I wanted to tie it in as we started talking about impact as in the realm of storytelling um and i just also wanted to give a quick introduction to gary who will be jumping in to in the presentation as well gary do you want to introduce yourself really quick yeah i'm happy to uh thank you for that um hey y'all my name is gary leonard my pronouns are he him um i'm repping a doc here as a steering committee member as well as a member of the IMPACT initiative. I'm joining in today from the ancestral unceded territory of the Munsi Lenape, also known as Brooklyn, New York. Um, I am an Indonesian male with brown skin and dark black hair, wearing a tan button-up shirt um, in front of a blurred screen. Thank you. Thanks, Yuri. Um, So yeah, I encourage folks to drop in the chat if you haven't already where you're coming from, where you're, where you're joining us from, and your names, and a quick introduction. Um, and feel free to use the chat as a space to ask questions. So we're going to get started. Um, Lani, do you want to jump to the next slide? Um, quick introduction about ADOC. If folks are new to ADOC, um, ADOC is a national network, Asian American Documentary Network, um, that works to increase the, the visibility and support of Asian Americans in a doc field. Uh, we welcome and include filmmakers who self identify as Asian American, recognizing that this is for us evolving definition. We encourage members from the broader Asian American community to be active. And yeah, uh, something I wanted to quickly pop in here is like this fellowship is open to people who are not necessarily part of ADOC network. Um, so if you know folks who might be interested in something like this, please feel free to also share this opportunity with them, even if they are not currently a part of the ADOC network. Yeah, we can jump to the next slide, Leonardi. So a little bit more about Impact Initiative and Impact Speaker Series. Um, so we really started this initiative because we wanted to dive into these questions that we have been investigating since last year with a five-part impact speaker series, an online panel series that we have been curating since August last year. Um, we're asking questions like, how do we redefine impact? And what can impact look like through a lens of cultural strategy, political education, and the various ways documentary film and storytelling can inspire and catalyze change? Um, the sessions that we did with at the Impact Speaker Series aimed to provide the ADOC network and beyond because it was also open to folks who are not in the network, um, a shared understanding and analysis of how film and storytelling can support and create social change in our communities. Um, and yeah, this Impact Speaker Series was a part of a larger ADOC Impact Initiative that built off the work of a previous ADOC 
Have a Four Impact Lab, uh, Cecilia Mejia's work as impact director previously, and now the current iteration of the impact initiative is this new fellowship that's coming out um, this year in 2024. And the impact working group includes me, Ashko, Gary Leonard, who's here with us, and PJ Raval, who is missed, deeply missed here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. So before I, we, before I wanted to jump in to share some guidelines about the fellowship, I just wanted to say that the purpose for this info session is really transparency and like um, our transparency and sharing our approach to this impact fellowship and share a bit all, more about our overall decision making process um, and allow potential applicants, interested parties to hear directly from us on um, what the reviewers, which is us three, will be looking for in the application process and what exactly the rubrics exactly that we're, we're, we're thinking through these application questions. Um, it's an attempt to remove barriers to folks who are considering to apply and recognizing that access to information and resources and time could sometimes be a barrier to entry. And so this is kind of like a step in the process of attempting to demystify um, sometimes, often, you know, what feels a little opaque in a process of applying to things and applying to fellowships. Um, but yeah, so I'll let Gary go ahead and start talking to us about the guidelines for our impact fellowship. Great. Thank you so much for that really beautiful kind of introduction, Ash. A couple of things that I just want to name at the top is um, the slides that we're sharing that we're going to be accompanying with kind of us moving through this. We recognize that they are really text heavy. Um, so this will also be, um, while the, re the recording will be shared on YouTube, we're also happy to share the uh, slides as well with you all if you need a bit of a refresher. Um, so just kind of want to name that. Um, and then also I do want to just emphasize that this is the first ever ADOC Impact Fellowship. Um, this has, um, to Ash's point, there's been a lot of really brilliant minds, been a lot of hard work that has kind of gone into this. Um, but for us, we're still figuring out a lot of these pieces as well. Um, so we just appreciate the grace uh, from you all as we kind of figure this thing out uh, collectively. Um, and just a little bit more context setting before I jump into the guidelines. And so while the work of ADOC has largely focused on advocacy and, and representation, representation within a nonfiction like media ecosystem, we have long held the belief that ADOC members have long understood the vital role that films play in elevate, elevating Asian American history perspectives and experience in the public sphere. And, and really as kind of a collective, um, ADOC has a strong track record in terms of collaborating with civic and cultural organizations, but maybe has lacked a little bit of strategy, coordination, and sustained support. Um, so for us, understanding the need for greater coordination between filmmakers and organizers, we're really here um, aiming to elevate the network's role within the social justice ecosystem. Um, and so that we're really committed to expanding the pipeline of stories about Asian Americans and ensuring that these stories are informed by justice movements. And to Ash's point, you know, this work is building off the larger impact initiative as a whole and as collective. And then, you know, this impact fellowship has also really sought a lot of inspiration from um, fellowship opportunities, both within our filmmaking and our social justice communities, and, and how we can best serve and support individuals who are already doing really amazing work um, and have big ideas to do really amazing work within AAPI communities. And, and we really feel that um, this fellowship can be um, a catalyst to jumpstart um, some of those ideas that operates at the intersection of um, filmmaking, storytelling, and social justice. Um, so let's look at the slides here, and I'm kind of I'm not going to read it to you verbatim exactly, but I'm just going to expand on some of these sections. All right. Um, so in terms of the guidelines, um, a little bit about like what we're seeking. Um, this is open in terms of guidelines, um, in terms of how you identify coming into this. This can be for um, social justice activists. Um, it can be for filmmakers. I see a lot of filmmakers here in this space. Um, this can be also for a lot of folks that are, are specifically working in impact, um, so in, impact practitioners. Um, these can also just be people who um, are, are working within a community, who have an idea um, around a project um, that is really kind of at the intersection of narrative and film and that of um, 
social justice. Um, and really, this is for projects that organize within and support AAP AAPI communities to bring about long-term equitable social change by leveraging nonfiction film, narrative strategies, and storytelling. So in terms of projects that we'll consider um, that focus on one or more of our broad goals, um, the goals really being to support AAPI communities, Asian diaspora communities, um, of the Impact Fellowship supporting individuals leading projects. Um, let's see, whoops, sorry, it's a, it's a duplicate there. Um, we do expect applicants to make the case that their projects have the potential to contribute something valuable um, to the de debate and discussions around AAPI communities. So um, a couple examples that we have on the, the landing page is, you know, in our view, there are numerous intersecting issues that have historically and continue to impact our AAPI communities. A couple examples that we've thrown out in terms of working class immigrants fighting exploitation and gentrification, combating the rise of anti-AAPI hate, um, campaigns to decriminalize massage therapy, undocumented folks fighting um, for a pathway to citizenship. citizenship. These are all um, efforts to envision and create alternatives uh, to our current systems and structures that you know, have negatively impacted AAPI communities. And we're really imagining that a lot of you all here have ideas and projects to be able to um, work within some of these communities and bring about long-term change. Um, let's see. And in terms of uh, making the case that the, the project has potential to contribute something, um, you know, we recognize that we are living in rather unprecedented times. Um, there's, um, to name it, there's um, a backdrop of genocide happening right now. And so where issues impacting the AAPI communities are really complex and involve an array of interrelated social, economic, political, and historical dynamics, um, to that extent, you know, we encourage folks to um, who are applying to be able to demonstrate how their projects fit within the current social and political moment um, and really how that fits within the AAPI movements, um, you know, past and present, um, and really encouraging folks to contextualize their projects um, and how to be able to move um, some of these ideas forward. I think we can go to the next slide. All right, so um, this section here, we want to focus on a little bit more in terms of the overview of this ADOC Impact Fellowship. Um, and, and, and namely, we want to kind of um, state what this is not intended for. Um, so the first thing here is this opportunity in this fellowship is not specifically for an impact campaign. And we do want to emphasize that, and this won't be the last time that we share this, um, and, and this just feels really important because we recognize that this is an ADOC impact fellowship. And so naturally we, we, we imagine that a lot of the people that are considering this are working within a film and thinking about an impact campaign. Um, but this is going to be for an individual um, who is working on a project. While it can be related to it, it is not specifically to support one film. It's not specifically centered to be able to support um, one film's impact campaign. Um, and so to the second bullet point, uh, proposed projects should not be centered around a single film. Um, it's really about working within um, an AAPI community and ways of involving storytelling as part of that. And there is a focus um, for this impact fellowship um, on uses of storytelling and filmmaking um, and the impact that this will have. Um, so not necessarily about just watching a film and discussing a social issue addressed in a specific film, uh, but really kind of thinking about how you are building power and you're working within a community that leverages a key aspect around film and storytelling and narrative strategies. And so a couple examples that we have here um, that this wouldn't be um, a fit. Um, so taking a film that's about an environmental issue on tour and then having a question and answer talk back afterwards, um, that is very much kind of rooted in, you know, a traditional, if you will, impact campaign. Um, however, on the flip side, you know, we encouraging people to really get creative here is say, for example, you're thinking about creating a filmmaking workshop in an Asian diaspora community with community partners, and you're really seeking to kind of build power and agency within those communities. Um, I think for us, you know, we're really trying to stretch um, 
filmmakers, um, film centered folks coming into the space to have more of a social justice lens in terms of how to um, work with communities. And we're also trying to stretch organizers to think about the ways in which they might be able to engage with film, how they might be able to engage with storytelling, how they might be able to engage with uh, narrative as part of, you know, this impact fellowship. And again, I want to stress that, you know, for the impact fellowship, we will be able to support three individuals um, who have different ideas as part of that. We can go to the next slide. All right, so um, who is the Impact Fellowship for? Um, so we're gonna get a little granular here, so do bear with me. Um, and so when I kind of go into some of the I, folks whom we're like really imagining, who we're both are imagining who are here in the space with us, um, but also in terms of you considering yourself applying or other folks who are watching this recording or other people who you think might be a good fit for this. So the first section that we have here is um, this fellowship is for filmmakers and impact practitioners. Um, and so a note here that we have is while the impact fellowship is not des designed to support necessarily a film's impact campaign, it can support an individual um, who can be a part of a film project, which I mentioned before, um, to really better position their already in place or envisioned strategies for impact specifically for something different. Um, so to that, that point that I made earlier, if you are working on a project and you know you have a really robust impact campaign, but you want to apply to this impact fellowship, it can complement it, but it has to be something really separate as part of your impact campaign. And so there will need to be a distinction that this award is not directly supporting an impact campaign or the production cost, but instead is already building off of the work that you kind of have in mind. And so let's see. Um, a filmmaker with an ongoing impact campaign who intends to use the funds to pay for the campaign costs will not be eligible. Um, and then a filmmaker who is committed to impact work in film um, wants to use the funds to create filmmaking workshops for AAPI youth, as an example, as a way of um, democratizing access to the medium. That, for example, would be eligible. And so these are just examples. Um, again, we're, we're, we don't mean to be prescriptive. We were just trying to illuminate some ideas for you to kind of uh, sit with in terms of how you're maybe considering coming into this and um, you're considering applying for the impact fellowship. And, and again, just want to kind of make that distinction between, um, you know, I know impact kind of connotates a, a certain idea in terms of what it's for. And we do want to kind of make that separation. All right, we can go to the next slide. All right. Um, so the uh, this impact fellowship is also for, as we mentioned, people outside of ADOC. Um, while yes, this is housed and within the auspice of ADOC, you know, as we mentioned, Ash mentioned, you know, one of our big goals is to really um, create pathways for both ADOC filmmakers to be able to work with um, AAPI-led organizations, but also for AAPI-led organizations to be able to engage within this vast network of, um, you know, film. Uh, filmmakers that we have here and also within the larger documentary ecosystem. And so this is for social justice activists and organizers. Um, so if you are an organizer that's working within an Asian diaspora community that is seeking to create a new project that ensures, um, you know, our people are seen, heard, and empowered, um, this could be a fit for you. Um, so again, another example that's not meant to be prescriptive, but just kind of something that we thought of is, you um, you are someone who works at an organization that leads campaigns directly working to support AAPI communities. Um, and you want to lead a storytelling workshop of oral traditions that shares knowledge, art, ideas, and cultural materials that are received, preserved, and transmitted orally from one generation to another. Um, this could be an opportunity for you in which um, this fellowship would you know, hopefully help you um, be able to implement that project and give you the tools to um, you know, better show up within your community as well. Um, also, you know, if you don't identify necessarily as an organizer, as an activist, if you're just someone within a community, um, we, we believe that um, some of the best leaders are people that are already doing the work within communities, which is really what we're going to get to in terms of um, how many folks kind of dreamed and imagined of imagine this fellowship of like people are already doing just you know really rad incredible work and we want to be able to support that um so say for example you're a leader that's um or a directly impacted uh 
impacted member of an AAPI community that's working to address an issue. Um, and say, for example, you have an idea towards a project that is leveraging uh, storytelling or is leveraging film or, or leveraging narrative, um, this could be a fit for you. And then lastly, um, you know, and, and this is, again, not a an exhaustive list. You know, we imagine that there's other people, um, but we just kind of want to give some ideas. Um, say, say, for example, you're someone who's working specifically within policy advocacy. Um, so you're doing more of the work in terms of structural transformation um, around issues that are impacting the Asian diaspora community through policy advocacy. And again, you want to leverage film um, or storytelling as part of your work. Um, these could be ways that you could kind of um, imagine this project, this impact project, um, and this fellowship. Um, let's see, is it still me here? Yep. A um, few more things um, before I hand it over to Ash. Um, we can go to the next slide. All right. So key dates um, for you all to keep in mind. So the um, Impact Fellowship opened on January 4th. Um, it's open right now. Um, today is our info session. Um, the applications will close at on February 8th. Um, at midnight Eastern time. The impact fellowship review period um, will take place now, really. Um, we hope that folks will consider submitting early um, and it will go until February 15th. Um, given that this is the first ever uh, impact fellowship award that we've been able to offer, um, we're not sure um, the, the number of applications that we receive, but just kind of looking at the folks that are here right now, um, we do anticipate, you know, receiving a lot of interest as part of this. And we do anticipate being able to uh, notify the um, three awardees um, on February 22nd um, as part of your then uh, participation in this uh, Impact Fellowship program. And then the program itself um, will go from March uh, 2024 through March 2025. So again, this will be a year-long fellowship. We can go to the next slide. A few more key dates um, as part of this year-long fellowship. Um, a big date that will be required is that there will be a cohort retreat um, that will take place in San Francisco um, at CAMFest, um, which is a center for Asian American media. Um, that's gonna be from May 9th, May, May 9th through May 19th. Those dates are TBD right now. Um, the, the expenses, um, in terms of travel and lodging will not come out of the overall impact fellowship grant um, that will be covered from ADOC, um, but that will be a requirement in terms of in-person, um, you know, uh, participation as, as part of that um, safety measures, um, assuming. There will be cohort support virtually. Um, so this will be through the, the year long fellowship. Uh, the cohort support will look um, differently. Um, there's more detailed there's a more detailed breakdown on the on the web page um, that has some of the topics that will be covered throughout the cohort through these virtual um, uh, calls. Additionally, there will be individual mentorship, um, and that will take through that will take place through the duration of the fellowship. Um, mentorship will largely be tailored based on your project itself. Um, you know, given that we are such a vast network at ADOC, um, we are able to lean on um, both, you know, filmmakers, organizers, narrative strategists, stra narrative strategists, and folks to be able to support you in your project, along with the Impact Initiative team, myself, Ash, and PJ Raval. And then lastly, in terms of kind of the format, um, there will be periodic reports and questionnaires. Um, we will require some evaluations and some reporting. Um, couple notes here. Um, yeah, um, really just in terms of just there will be periodic reporting and we can get more into detail, um, you know, once the, the three uh, fellows are selected as part of that. We can go to the next slide. All right. Um, so let's see. One more in terms of overview. Um, so in terms of reportings and, evaluate, and, and evaluations, um, Ash is going to move us through some of the application questions, um, but what will be required is a detailed budget that outlines where expenses will be allocated, along with budget reporting will be required throughout the duration of the fellowship. Um, and also at the end of this, um, 
at the end of the fellowship, um, we do anticipate sharing a bit of a presentation uh, with the entire ADOC network. Um, and that really is because this is the first time that we've ever done this, is that we want to be able to kind of build and, um, you know, create a bit of a case study. I think one of the things that um, we're most excited about is that this is something that's really dynamic and it's really new. And, you know, there's a lot of just like really brilliant folks here. And we want to be able to kind of share this with folks um, who have, you know, other big ideas. And so really, um, we, we, we don't have a specific way in terms of how we're envisioning that, but we do anticipate there being kind of a presentation and a kind of sharing out um, afterwards. And there will be a kind of a wrap up final program evaluation in terms of um, how we were able to kind of support your needs throughout this fellowship. And then in terms of the Impact Fellowship grant itself, um, each of the fellows will receive uh, $20,000 um, towards the implementation of their impact project. Um, and a big thing that I do want to emphasize here that this is unrestricted. And what we mean by that is it's unrestricted um, to support your commitment to and the execution of the project. Um, we really do honor uh, folks' time and their labor, and we recognize that folks have other jobs. And so the $20,000, you know, we imagine that this will go a long way towards your project, but we also recognize that this is, you know, creating a line item for yourself to pay yourself is really important too. Um, so it's unrestricted in that sense. And so we will work with you in terms of like making sure that, you know, these uh, monthly, these monthly reports, um, working with your budget are kind of um, sound and in alignment. Uh, but we do want to kind of name that in terms of where some of these, uh, the costs can go towards. There is a note, um, this includes not non C4 activities. Um, so really, the only restriction here is that it can't go towards any party, um, any partisan um, lobbying. Um, and then uh, again, the reporting is we anticipate fellows needing to fulfill evaluations, intermediary budget reporting, and then also just like monthly check-ins along with some of the cohort um, support meetings that we'll have as part of that. And to dig more into more of kind of the eligibility and some of the application questions, I'm gonna hand it back over to Ash. Thanks, Gary. Um, I'm gonna move us through the rest of this presentation hopefully in the next 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll leave, we're gonna open up for questions. So I'm gonna run us through eligibility in the next slide really quickly and highlight some um, notable things. So obviously we're looking at, this is an ADOC Impact Fellowship. We're looking at projects that involve the AAPI community. Um, and so we're looking at projects that focus and center AAPI communities or involving AAPI audience members. Um, and you need to be committed for the duration of the Impact Fellowship, which is a whole year from March, 2024, 2025. Um, all the things that Gary had mentioned, the cohort retreats to start off with and the virtual sessions that are gonna take place in the whole year. Um, we are only accepting applications from US-based people at the current moment. We would love to open this up eventually to international um, applicants, but for the time being and for our first year, we're we have to uh, keep it to just US-based for now. Um, I'm gonna jump to the next slide. Also, this is information that is on the website as well. So, um, you can hop on there to if you'll need to like look through this um to have the words exactly um we wanted to also at the same time while we're talking about eligibility you talk about what is not eligible which is that projects that don't focus on social issue topics relevant to the aapi experience um projects that don't center asian and our asian american communities and our participants um projects that do not do not incorporate impact towards social change either a nonfiction film, narrative strategies, or storytelling. And as we had also mentioned before, projects that intend to use this impact fellowship grant towards film production and impact campaigns or distribution or any expenses related towards film post-production distribution that will not be eligible. So I'm going to talk us through the application questions. Um, so the application is online and live right now. So it will be until it closes on February 8th. So 
you can also look at the application questions on the, the Google form. Um, next slide, Leilani. Um, so it's not a long application, but we're hoping to be able to understand your project through these five main questions that, um, the five main sections of the application. The first one being project description, right? Um, we are here, we're trying to understand what exactly your project is. Um, it is, we're trying to understand the issue your project is gonna address, why this issue is important, you know, contextualize the issue for us, your methods for addressing the issue. Um, we feel like effective applications will demonstrate how this project fits within the current social and political movement. So give it a little bit of context and perhaps even dream a little bit of like impact, you know, what, how this situates itself with the past and what it could be in the in the future. Um, how this how this project relates to histories of AIPI nonfiction storytelling and movement organizing. Um, and yeah, how this project moves us towards a more just and equitable society for our AAPI communities. Um, the second application question is about challenges and opportunities. So this is a section where you can reflect a little bit about the project and potentially describe some challenges or difficulties that you might envision, might impact your ability to advance the project. Talk to us about any security or safety risks associated with the project, um, how you plan to address these challenges, and what the unique opportunities related to your project at this moment and how it will be transformative. Um, and then the next, the third section is timeline and impact. So tell, talk to us about where this project is at right now. Is it just starting? Is it, are you ideating? Have you already maybe done an iteration of it and you're looking to elevate it? Um, tell us about all the different phases of the project and envision it manifesting into, including where it is at right now. Um, and describe anticipated target audience of the project and a summary of the impact that you are aiming to create with the project, not just during the impact fellowship period, but I think it would also be competitive to describe the life of this project beyond this impact fellowship. Um, and then the fourth section is budget and budget description. So we will require folks to submit a budget. Um, it will be basically a breakdown of how you anticipate the spending of the 20,000 stipend, the grant, um, costs that are associated with the project. We understand that 20,000 often is not enough to cover like the full funding of a project. And so please also describe if, um, if your project exceeds the amount of the fellowship award, please describe what those extra costs are and the plan you have for security, securing that additional funding. And the last section is the applicant statement. So we would love to hear, you know, we've heard a lot about your project now. We want to hear about you and give us a little, um, a, an idea of who you are, what your experience has been, your background, your skills, um, the, maybe the networks and connections that you have that make you feel prepared to and ready to carry out this particular project at this particular time in your life. Um, what you want to gain from the fellowship, what you can bring to or contribute to this cohort because it will be a cohort model. The fellowship will be a cohort model. Um, yeah, so this is a segment to just get more personal and share a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about before we go to Q&A is just gonna be criteria as in how where our brain is at while we're looking at your applications, while we're reading applications. Um, so when we're thinking about your project, you know, we it would be very helpful for us to understand the who, what, whys of the things. What, what is the project exactly? You know, like what the who the community is and what, what kind of impact it would create. I think being able to communicate all these things across the board would allow us to, you know, check the, the strength of the project based on these three factors. The issue that a project is addressing, um, 
it would be effectively it would be an effective application if the timeliness of the project is is communicated and what i mean by that is like why right now why why right now in 2024 why right now perhaps in your life or in a juncture of your career or the work that you've been doing um what is the issue that's being addressed how does this current project fit within the social the current social political moment and how does that fit within your history of work and does it make clear that how I would leverage storytelling as a key component of this project so again you know you know we have addressed this a little bit cyclically in this presentation but this isn't this is a fellowship for uh for storytelling and um nonfiction film, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be nonfiction filmmaking, but there is the storytelling aspect that we're really trying to leverage in the impact projects that we want to um, support. And just hopping on to the last slide, um, the two more main things that we are going to be looking at is the feasibility of the project. So we are looking for folks who can complete this project within the fellowship year. Um, additionally, feasibility of a project could look like what additional budget and fundraising is needed and how you have how you have planned to procure these funds or additional support. Um, so even having, you know, you don't need to have those funds already secured, but I think having an idea of where that support can come in and where the money can come in could be helpful in communicating the strength of a project in terms of feasibility. Um, and of course, you know, we want to know how this fellowship supports the project and why this juncture is like the perfect amalgamation at this current point of time. So you can also discuss the significance of the fellowship stipend for your project. And um, you can also talk about how does fellowship support might be crucial in where you are currently right now in your work as well on top of the project. Um, and then the last thing is connection to the community, um, positionality and accountability. And I think this comes in in the applicant statement, the last bit of the application, which is why are you the best person to execute this project? Um, so tell us about yourself and yeah, we would we would love to get to know you as well as the project. So that's it for me. I think we can jump over to Q and A. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, thank you so much for that, Ash. And what we're gonna do now is Ash and I are maybe just gonna kind of bop back and forth, and we're just gonna read these questions aloud, and we're gonna just do our best. Um, to be able to answer them. And one piece of advice that I would share is that the this this work really builds off of the impact speaker series. Um, so as part of that five part impact speaker series, we go through different modes and modules of how people are creating change uh, within different communities through policy work, through grassroots organizing. Um, and so if you want to go back and, and, and watch some of those recordings, uh, and maybe that might give you a little bit of inspiration coming into this. And then we also recognize that there's a lot of kind of nuance and complexity as part of this impact fellowship, because of course we're all like, you know, complex, you know, people with many ideas. And so I will say that if there are any questions, we're going to do our best to answer them here, but we recognize that some of this may have to come offline in terms of uh, questions too, in which Ash and I and PJ will do our best to answer those. So um, Ash, you want to jump into the Q&A? Yeah, so I can take the first question and maybe we can just do like back and forth. Um, the first question is, can the funds be used for production costs of a filmmaking workshop that results in community created films? Um, I would say yes. I feel like, so the crux here for me is filmmaking workshop, right? I think there's a piece of this that's like how that, there's a piece of this that's not, that's about not just consuming films, a la like impact camp, impact screenings, you know, where you're like watching films and talking about it. And then just talking about the issue addressed within one particular film. But this impact fellowship wants to imagine impact beyond a traditional impact campaign and think about film as the vessel in itself like the, the the storytelling in itself is a part of the 
impact work. And so, you know, having this framework of like, not about consuming films, but making films, I think that in itself is, is that component of like leveraging storytelling for organizing. So to that question, I would say yes. Good. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. Thank you for that, Ash. Um, so the next question that's been posed in the chat, and again, for those that are here, feel free to go ahead and drop those into the chat, or if you feel more comfortable, you can just uh, DM um, Ash and I directly and we can read those aloud. Um, so the question reads, can the project pertain to an existing program? Uh, for example, enhancing a program that promotes community-driven storytelling projects that focus on AAPI issues? Uh, my answer to that would be yes. Um, we actually have envisioned that, um, you know, just to kind of lay out an example, say, for example, there is um, a program and an initiative that's specifically working within tenants' rights within an Asian diaspora community. Is there a way in which you're already, you know, working with that community specifically and you think being able to have a storytelling project can be able to promote that? Yes, that's really kind of, I think, so much of of some of the ideas when this this thing was kind of brewing of how we envision creating real impact and change. Um, and we we figured that there would be a lot of programs that were already in existence, especially if some people who were considering applying were already at, you know, um, AAPI led organizations that this is an opportunity to be able to kind of like enhance that, to be able to scale that and to be able to kind of take that out of maybe traditional, if you will, um, organizing into more kind of like narrative strategies that plays a part of a larger cultural strategy. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's a yes. Thanks, Gary. So the next question is, can teams apply? Um, the answer is yes. Teams can apply, collectives can apply. However, I think that because of budgetary constraints, um, in terms of going to the CAM retreat, the um the kickoff of the of the of the fellowship, only one person from this collective would be able to attend that in person retreat. So we are looking at three. We we will have three fellows for the fellowship. By that, it could be one collective being one fellow, but in terms of attending this in person CAM retreat. To kick off the fellowship, it would only we would only be able to bring one person to it from each. So it would be like three pe three physical people going to camp. Hope that clears it up. <laughs> yeah. Um. And maybe I can do this next one too. Can you work with communities in Asia? Do you have do they have to be in the U.S.? I would say you can work with communities outside of the U.S. Um. I'm talking about Asian diaspora. You know, you could be working with Asian communities in Latin America. Um, but, you know, keeping in mind budgetary constraints of the $20,000 of the grant and like how feas the, phys the feasibility aspect of it. Yeah. Great. Um, so the next question that we have here is how many from the May 19th through the uh, May 19th hours per day will be devoted to the cohort retreat? In other words, will the fellows have time to do their own project? To do, to, to do their own work projects? Um, the short answer is that is yes, there will be absolutely dedicated time um, for some of the impact fellows to be able to specifically support um, or be able to focus on their impact projects. Um, as of right now, we don't have those dates set. We're still kind of working behind the scenes in terms of figuring out some of the logistical components. Um, we're also trying to figure out what kind of relationship with CAM there's going to be. But, you know, we are treating um, that as a, an opportunity for um, the beautiful kind of time being able to spend in person with one another. Um, I, I think it's just going to be really critical. Um, as Ash has mentioned is, you know, this is going to be a cohort, albeit, you know, a smaller cohort, you know, it's going to also include myself, Ash and PJ. Um, we're going to be having different folks kind of rotating in and out of that space. And we really want to build that that kind of um, that camaraderie. We want to build um, the trust. We want to kind of build some of that relationship forming. Um, and so the the retreat will be kind of centered around that. And as part of that, um, recognizing that people have different learning styles, people have different like you know modes of being able to absorb information. As we do anticipate, as as you know, me and Ash and then PJ have discussed, is the ways in which we would kind of construct that retreat 
is hopefully we can create one that's optimal for different types of learners and different types of people who are willing to share, both in terms of creating a, a shared space together, but also giving people ample time to do their own work. And then also, you know, we'll be at CAM. Um, and so that is like, you know, a, a real opportunity both to get to know a lot of ADOC members who will be there, to be able to, you know, see a lot of films that are, are by a lot of our ADOC people. Um, and so we're thinking about that as really valuable time together but um, unfortunately right now it's starting to go long here as we don't have those specific dates but we do hope that we can get that to you all um, as soon as possible okay i'm gonna jump to the next one thanks gary um do you mind explaining the last point under what projects are not eligible again i know we've talked about it but i'm still unclear especially the part about a grant not going towards production costs um so yeah, so the the grant is not going to go towards a tr traditional production cost in a sense that it, it's not going to fund, you know, if you're in, in, in the production process of making a film, it's not going to fund your DP, it's not going to fund um, camera rental, it's not going to fund, you know, those kind of like normal tr costs that goes into creating a film. Um, I think maybe what could orient this, the, this thinking about impact is, you know, instead of we're we're not funding the making of one single film from one single filmmaker, um, and we're not funding impact campaigns in the traditional like watching film sense of the word. What we want to do is create storytelling, but in a context of community, in a context of partnership with community organizations. For example, um, the proposed the proposed project is should not be centered around one single film that is you know, made by one person in a traditional sense of the word. Um, it's about working within API community involving storytelling um, in a way that builds connection, builds power. Um, so think we're thinking more about the uses of storytelling and making it more about community engagement and maybe even thinking about it like, I don't know, educating the community to issues where we're not we're not thinking about educating a community to issues in one film, like in a traditional like impact screening, but we're thinking about uses of film and how we can even democratize the use of film or like how we can spread storytelling as a tool to people who hadn't had access to it before. Um yeah, so I think creating storytelling here is key. Creating storytelling in a context of community and com community partnerships, and that being the quote unquote impact that we're we're thinking about. Yeah, I hope that answers that. That was a great, great response, Ash. Um, so the next question. Um, I think I know how to respond to this, but I'd, I'd love to hear from you, Ash. And these are great questions, y'all. And and I, I I anticipated nothing less given kind of the kind of the nuance of it. So the question reads: I understand that the funding cannot be used for an individual film, but uh, can it be used towards a community-driven web series? Um, and if so, would production costs be valid, including potential travel cost? Um, Ash, where do you land on that one? <laughs> I think it, it's really about framing. Yeah. You know, it if, it's, if you're thinking about, like, if you think, like, talk to us about how this, I don't know if this is where your brain is at, but, like, talk to us about how this is not just the production of one film for the sake of making a film. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think that's where the nuance is in our Impact Fellowship is, like, if you're making a film with other people, talk to us about how these this in the making of you are building and bridging communities and building strength within the AIPI community. And think about even like what this film, you know, I think what I think film in a traditional sense of the word has this very prescriptive life where you make a film, it goes to festivals and that maybe that's you know, it gets distributed on like POV or something. Um which is great, but you know, like how much how much more can we do with filmmaking? How much more can we do with storytelling that is outside of this um, quote unquote, like capital I impact as we know it. I think that's what we're really trying to break here with the impact fellowship is thinking beyond film, the film life being contained as is and like what it can, 
do with people and in community and rooting that more within the relationships. And so I think it's it's not to say that, you know, you can't you can't fund a film's production if you're doing it collectively with other people. It's like, what is this that is more than just a a regular film production, you know? I think if it was doing all the things that we mentioned, like creating storytelling in a way that perhaps democratizes the medium, perhaps it brings, brings power to folks that who hadn't had access to it before, or like, you know, brings in people into the process in a collaborative way that expands beyond the benefit of the core creatives in the film project. You know what I mean? Like if, if this is affecting more than just the director and the producer, it's like who, like where, who is this community that is being created in this process? Yeah. That's real finger snaps, Ash. It's like, you know, to Ash's point in terms of the capital I, in terms of impact, we, the ways in which the impact spirit, impact series and how we have been seeking to be able to redefine and reimagine impact, it's not didactic, it's not prescriptive, it's not a specific way that film needs to do a thing. And so, yes, if you're really, if the framing is that if you're building, you know, agency and power and you're working within a community towards a thing and the web series is a means to that, then yes, obviously you can make that case. And, and of course, in terms of the travel costs, that obviously is within folded within that too. Um, but I think so much of that is going to need to be captured in there. So I think this is this is really beautiful in the sense that we're going to get a lot of these. But I think the the true heart of a, of a project and kind of the impact that you're imagining is going to also come through as well. So it's not so binary in terms of can it be this yes or can it be this no. It's more of how you're folding in, kind of how you're working within the community as part of that. Okay, the next question is, can the grant be shared with in, with my key collaborators? Uh, for example, I'm working with two professional mental health professionals. Can I pay them from the grant? And with that, do you have an idea of the percentage you're expecting to go to certain parts of the project? So it is an unrestricted fund. Um, we leave it up to you to decide how to allocate those funds um, as long as, you know, your allocation of funds is working contributes towards the completion of the, the project. I hope that answers that. Um, the next question is, um, let's see, is a, is a film expected at the end of it if so, how long of a film? And um, feel free to drop into the chat, um, the person who asked this question, if I'm missing something. But you know, to be clear, this isn't, um, we're, we're not expecting a film at all. Um, again, so much of this Impact Fellowship is to support you know, three brilliant individuals who are working within an Asian diaspora community that leverages an, a part of Film, yes, but also largely just storytelling and um, and narrative. Um, and so there's ways of being able to incorporate it. But again, like it, it's not going towards production cost. Um, and, you know, we don't have any parameters in terms of what type of films you might be engaging with as part of that. Um, so please let me know if I'm missing something um, in this question. But uh, no, there's, there's not a film that's expected as part of that. Um, Okay, so the next one I see is storytelling is not, question from Jamie, storytelling is not limited to film, correct? It can be visual art, comics, poetry, or histories, theater, et cetera. Yes, that's correct. So we're, we're it's not limited to just documentary films. Um, oral histories definitely also count as storytelling. Cool. All right, so the next question that we have here is, um, can you explain more about how it would work to apply as a team? If you're working with a partner on a project, would each person apply separately for the individual fellowship or would one person apply for the team? Um, the short answer is one person would apply for the team. As Ash mentioned at the top, um, because of so much of the relationship building culture creating component of this cohort will happen at the in-person retreat. And um, there will be specific support throughout the duration of that year long fellowship through the form of monthly cohort calls, through the form of mentorship, in the form of individual calls 
We also recognize that not everyone as part of the team will be able to benefit. Um, and so you can apply as a team, but we would need to work with you in terms of how to best utilize that or what does that look like in terms of maybe even a rotation. We haven't gotten that far yet. Um, we were imagining this as just kind of individuals, but we recognize that so much of the work that we do is as part of a team. So we didn't obviously want to be closed off as part of this. And so we do imagine that there's a version of, say, for example, you're applying as a team for a project. One person from your team could be the person that comes to CAM with us and is a part of the cohort. And then, you know, that person continues to, to take part in every of the, the cohort sessions. And then we would work with you to make sure that your entire team is also has kind of a feedback loop as part of that. But again, um, in terms of the participation, it would be really individualized, but obviously of course, in terms of the grant itself, um, it can go towards more of the, the larger piece in terms of both the project as well as the rest of the team as well. So those are all the questions. Um... We are at time, so if you're in a Bay Area already, could two members of the team go to Cam Fest potentially? I think we should talk, we could we could talk about that. We could talk about that for sure. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So okay. So because we are at time, I'm going to wrap up. So Lailani, if you want to jump to the next slide, there is my email contact up there. I just wanted to share that if folks still have questions lingering, uh, you can feel free to email me and I will definitely get back to you. Um, once again, this is a recorded session. So if you wanted to go back and listen to anything that we shared today, you can go do so on the ADOC YouTube channel. Um, okay, so yeah, I think we should wrap for today so that we can respect everyone's time. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. And if you're on the East Coast at in the evening on a weekday, um, we're really, really excited to read all the applications. So please send them in. Um, applications due February 8th. So please do so before then. The applications close on 11 p.m., 11.59 ET on February 8th. So that's that. Okay. Thanks, everybody.